southeastern Hopkins County in northwestern Kentucky until 11.15 p.m. Central Standard Time. On the night of December 10th, 2021, a historic tornado churned for over 165 miles across western Kentucky. This tornado claimed 57 lives and decimated the communities of Mayfield, Benton, Princeton, Bremen, and Dawson Springs. The National Weather Service Office of Paducah, Kentucky and outside engineering experts surveyed the damage path of the tornado. The tornado was given the second highest rating on the enhanced Fujita scale, an EF4. In the days leading up to the release of the rating, many suggested that this event would end the EF5 drought of almost nine years as photos of astonishing damage made waves across the internet. Once news of the rating broke out, many started to question the effectiveness of the enhanced Vegeta scale given what they had seen coming out of the affected areas. Today, I'm going to break down how the scale works, give its strengths and weaknesses, and what the future looks like for the scale. The United States is the tornado capital of the world, averaging around 1,000 tornadoes per year, far more than any other country on the planet. Most of these tornadoes are weak, while some devastate entire communities. Classifying tornadoes was seen as an extremely difficult task given tornadoes themselves are in an extremely hostile environment, and that measuring them was both a scientific and logistical hurdle. So instead of measuring the tornadoes directly, like a forensics team after a crime, analyzing the evidence left behind tells a story. The Fujita scale has been the standard when it comes to rating tornadoes for over half a century. Developed by Dr. Ted Fujita and Alan Pearson, they put it to use in 1971. Using the damage to classify tornadoes was first widely done in the survey of the 1974 super outbreak, and it became the standard in the United States. In 2007, the original Fujita scale was decommissioned in the United States, and an updated version of the scale was implemented, the Enhanced Fujita Scale, more commonly called the EF Scale. Fundamentally, the Enhanced Fujita Scale works off of damage indicators, or DIs for short, to estimate tornado wind speeds based off of the damage left behind. There are 28 different types of DIs that range from simple tree damage all the way to high-rise building damage. Within each damage indicator, there are degrees of damage, or DODs, that the damage indicator can exhibit to estimate wind speed. For example, there are five degrees within the softwood tree damage indicator that range from 48 to 153 miles per hour. Looking at an engineered structure, like the Institutional Building DI, for example, there are 11 degrees that range from 59 miles per hour to 268 miles per hour. Each degree for every category has a description of the damage so that surveyors of the tornado damage can assign the appropriate degree of damage for the surveyed damage indicator. Once all of the DIs are assigned to their respective degree, the degrees determine the wind speed which will put the DI into a 0 to 5 category. 0 is the weakest classification at 65 to 85 miles per hour and 5 is the strongest at over 200 miles per hour. The tornado then receives a rating based off of the highest rated DI. For example, if the highest DI in the damage path was a 3, but they ranged from 136 to 165 miles per hour, then the 165 mile per hour DI is the ultimate classifier of the tornado as a whole, making that tornado an EF3 with an estimated peak strength of 165 miles per hour. The enhanced Fujita scale has received quite a bit of criticism. Firstly, even in the early days of the original Fujita scale, it was pointed out that tornado intensity and building damage are related, but not always correlated. The quality of construction of buildings plays a major part in how tornadoes are rated. There's been a string of large tornadoes in recent years that have torn across the eastern United States and have only achieved EF4 status, when many would argue that these tornadoes were stronger than rated. Notable EF5s, including Joplin, Moore, and Piedmont tornadoes, impacted and decimated well-engineered structures, like hospitals, schools, and even oil drilling rigs. 
But many times, tornadoes traverse more rural areas where building codes are more relaxed than dense cities. For example, let's take a look at this damage indicator from the Mayfield, Kentucky EF4 tornado. This is a 167 mile per hour DI, classifying this damage as low end EF4. On the surface level, it seems that this building was completely slabbed and swept away, which some may argue is an EF5 level damage indicator. But let's look a little closer into the construction of this building. Specifically, let's look at these nails here. These nails were holding the wall studs into the bottom wall plate, which is anchored into the concrete foundation. These studs were only straight nailed into the bottom plates, with no sign that they had any angle bracket supporting them, which is a rather weak connection method when there's tension on the studs. The vast majority of the time, these studs are in compression as the mass of the structure is pulled down due to gravity. However, when the tornado impacted the structure, a likely combined force from the wind loading on the windward side of the structure as well as the pressure difference between the high pressure inside versus the extreme low pressure in the tornado caused a significant uplift force on the studs. This uplift force is in tension rather than compression and the straight nailed studs provided little resistance causing the entire structure above the anchored wall plates to succumb to the tornado. Therefore, because of the weak connection method, the maximum DOD that this structure could earn was 167 miles per hour. It's important to remember that this doesn't mean that the tornado was actually 167 miles per hour, but rather this damage was able to verify this tornado was at least 167 miles per hour. In actuality, this tornado probably possessed EF5 capable winds, but the structure it impacted was not engineered to a point of being able to verify the 200 mile per hour plus winds in order to classify it higher. This is the main arguing point against the EF scale. These criticisms of the EF scale have grown louder as different technologies have evolved over the years that could have been used to measure tornado wind speeds beyond the standard damage surveil practices. The most notable case is the May 31, 2013 El Reno, Oklahoma tornado. This tornado grew to a record-breaking 2.6 miles wide and had mobile radar measured winds of nearly 300 miles per hour. However, based on damage assessment, the highest DI within the track was only of the EF3 category. Therefore, the tornado received an EF3 rating despite the radar measurements documented. It's important to remember that when the scale was conceived, the most consistent factor of assessment of tornado strength was damage. It was impossible back in the early 70s to accurately measure the wind speeds inside a tornado. The damage that was left behind was the next closest thing that could be used to approximate intensity. Obviously, this is where we run into the issue of the scale not truly being a pure method of rating actual tornado intensity. Instead, it should be thought of rather as a tornado impact scale, rating on how destructive the tornado was to both natural and man-made structures. With these newer capabilities, like mobile radar and other remote sensing methods, what does that mean for the future of the EF scale? The good news is that the next generation of the scale is under development now. Tim Marshall, a meteorologist and structural engineer whose expertise is in tornado damage surveying, has acknowledged that the DI list will extensively grow and begin to adopt new measurements into the consideration beyond the damage alone for the next generation of the scale. Similar to the development of the enhanced Fujita scale, a team of meteorologists and engineers are taking on the newfound methods and information to build the next upgrade of the scale. The American Society of Civil Engineers, or ASCE, has been adamant about vastly expanding the damage indicators and implementing a lot more data into the derivation of the estimated wind speeds. Over the last 50 years of systematic tornado damage surveying, so much has been learned about how buildings fail in tornadoes that ASCE and the National Weather Service is ensuring that these observations can be translated into mathematical analysis, therefore helping derive a more accurate scale in the future. On a closing note, it's extremely important to note that the basis of improving scales, surveying damage, and classifying tornadoes is the human impact. Homes, businesses, communities, 
and loved ones are often lost in these storms, changing so many lives in a flash. Although it is important to continually improve our classification methods, it's even more important to understand the loss that occurs with these storms. And to those affected, a rating will not bring back their home, their possessions, or even their loved ones.